Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Earlier in the day, at the time of recording, the Met Office named Storm Amy, the first named storm of the autumn and the first storm to come from this season's new storm naming list. That's going to bring impacts to many parts, but particularly northern parts of the UK on Friday night. But before Amy arrives, well, we've got some heavy rain to deal with in some parts of the UK, but not all. There's a strong northwest-southeast gradient across the country at the moment, and that's because there's a weather front sitting over northwest Scotland, but it's aligned with the isobars and the jet stream, and so it's not being pushed through. It's basically what we call waving across the country. That means that it's ebbing and flowing. It's bringing pulses of heavy rain on and off through the next few days. We've seen that during the last couple of days and we're going to continue to see that weather front just wriggling across the far northwest of the UK during Thursday. And after the rain does ease off a little overnight, we start Thursday with another pulse of very wet weather pushing into Ireland, Northern Ireland, and then Western Scotland by the afternoon. And in fact, the afternoon is looking particularly unpleasant for Northern Ireland, for Western Scotland, breezy, heavy and persistent rain. And that rain really mounting up. We've seen some very wet weather so far this week in Western Scotland in particular. And over the next couple of days, we'll continue to see 50 to 80 millimetres adding up over some of the most exposed hills of Western Scotland. Yellow rain warning in force for that. Some outbreaks of rain to the north and the east of Scotland on and off. One or two spots for Western England and Wales. A lot of cloud here, but some brightness for the Midlands and the southeast. And where we get that brightness, we'll see temperatures reach the high teens, low 20s. But the rain does finally move through. Later Thursday, it pushes across the whole of the UK. So a soggy night for many, some heavy rain for a time before most places start off a little quieter on Friday, although we've still got some heavy bursts of rain clearing East Anglia and the southeast. A very mild night to come across the UK. A stark contrast for the south, where we've had some chilly mornings this week. Notice the difference if you step out the door on Friday morning, temperatures of 14 or 15 Celsius. As that system clears through, already hot on the heels, we've got Storm Amy. Now, to understand how Amy is going to affect the UK and some of the uncertainties involved with Amy, we need to rewind the clock to the time of recording, midday on Wednesday. And Amy not existing at this point, but we do have on the other side of the Atlantic two hurricanes close to each other and interacting with each other. In fact, some of the energy from Umberto uh, transferring into Imelda, for example, and actually. In the next few hours, during Wednesday afternoon, Umberto will quickly diminish, but the remnants from Umberto will form a new low, which will move into the North Atlantic and get picked up by a very powerful jet stream, which is coming out of North America. That's going to allow it to be swept up in this uh, westerly Atlantic airflow and move towards the UK. But at the same time, Amy then transfers to the north of the jet stream, which is the cold side, and that allows it to spin up very rapidly. Lots of isobars added to the center of this low. And by the time we get to Friday evening, it's bearing down upon the UK as a very deep area of low pressure. Now, if you've been watching some of our videos this week on YouTube, you'll know that in Alex Deacon's week ahead and his deep dive, he talked about some of the uncertainties about the track of Amy, although it wasn't called Amy at that point. And those uncertainties stemmed from, of course, the complex interaction between Umberto and Imelda, the remnants from Umberto then being swept up by the jet stream, and this explosive deepening we're seeing. And remarkably, we do have reasonably good agreement at this stage by, in terms of where Amy will be sitting on Friday evening. Now, this is the Met Office model run, but if I switch to the European model control run, it's showing something very similar, a deep area of low pressure just to the northwest of the UK. Now, the European model isn't just run once, it's run many times. We have a deterministic run, there's a control run, and then there are 50 ensemble members, each of which are tweaked very slightly at the start to see how those differences at the start could escalate into much larger differences later on. And this is the control run, but if I put on the track for Amy from all those 50 or so members, you can see that actually there's not great agreement. They're all roughly to the northwest of the UK, but there is a bit of spread developing by this stage. 
all from a similar starting point, then they start to diverge. And that divergence is not just in terms of the track, but the depth of the low. If we put on the depth of Storm Amy, these are going to be coloured up in terms of the depth of the low. And you can see the key there on the right, the different colours representing how deep the low could be. The blues represent a more typical depth for low pressure. And then the yellows, oranges and reds are representing very deep areas of low pressure. So you can see that Amy starts off fairly typical in terms of its depth and then as it approaches the UK we get more and more of these yellows and oranges and by the time we get to uh, Friday night there's a bit more divergence in the track but perhaps more significantly there is some divergence in the depth and that all comes down to how it's interacting with the jet stream during the latter half of Friday, how much the jet stream can spin it up and that comes down to very subtle differences in the timing in which Umberto gets picked up by the cold side of the jet stream. So by the time we get to 3 a.m. Saturday, some reasonable uh, differences in the depth, about 10 hectopascals or so, and that ultimately will lead to subtle differences and uncertainties in terms of the peak wind strength. So we're not quite there in terms of having nailed the peak wind speeds for Storm Amy, but we've got a reasonable idea of where the strongest winds will occur and the rough values we can expect. And this graphic here shows the Met Office model, Storm Amy crossing the north of the UK, bringing a broad sway, the 50 to 60 miles an hour wind gusts across West and North Wales into Northern England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. In some exposed spots, more than 60 miles an hour, but the most exposed spots and the strongest winds likely to experience wind gusts of 70 or 80 miles an hour. And that's, at the moment, looking likely to affect the north and northwest of Scotland. Yellow warnings for wind are in force for Northern Ireland, North Wales, parts of Northern England, and much of Scotland, because those kinds of wind gusts, as they move through during Friday night and peak during the early hours before Amy slowly pulls away on Saturday. Those kinds of winds could cause disruption to transport, power supplies, dangerous conditions around coasts with large waves and flying debris. And it's not just the wind, it's the rain as well. We're going to see another spell of heavy rain. Now this is Friday. It's a fine day for many parts of the UK after that first system clears. We've got some bright weather through the Midlands, eastern England, eastern Scotland, but soon enough it turns cloudy in the west, rain pushing into Northern Ireland initially during Friday afternoon and that rain turning heavier and more persistent across many parts of the UK, but particularly again Scotland, western Scotland seeing another bout of potentially impactful rainfall risk of localised flooding. But the impacts from Storm Amy not necessarily just combined, um, confined to the north of the UK. We're also likely to see a very active weather front topple southeastwards during the early hours of Saturday across much of England and Wales. You can just about make it out. It's a very thin line of intense rainfall. It's something we call line convection. There's a Met Office video on our YouTube channel that explains how line convection works. But this will basically be a spell, a short spell of 15 minutes, half an hour or so, of very intense rain accompanied by really quite gusty winds. So some very lively weather in a brief spell of time during the early hours of Saturday as that active weather front clears through. Peak winds, as I mentioned, in the far north and northwest occur during the early hours of Saturday. Then all of that's pushed through. It's a soggy start to the southeast. Showers, blustery showers, quickly moving into the north and northwest of the UK. A relatively mild night, but not feeling very pleasant first thing because we've got this strong wind and these frequent showers moving through. Heavy downpours, perhaps some rumbles of thunder as well. Some of these downpours turning more persistent once again across the north and northwest, arriving in bands. In between, some bright spells in the south in particular, but yeah, it's going to feel a bit cooler on Saturday, I think, because we've got this strong northwesterly breeze. Then overnight, those showers keep on coming, so frequent downpours, particularly in the north and the west, a little drier and clearer, with winds eventually coming down after a very blustery day. And by the time we get to uh, Sunday morning, well, temperatures again in the double figures fairly widely, but a brighter start to Sunday across England and Wales. And all in all, if we skip ahead to the afternoon, it's a little quieter, but it's not entirely settled. We've got this westerly breeze, quite blustery in the northwest again. Spells of rain, mostly light to moderate, and a lot of cloud cover. The best 
chance of any brighter spells towards the southeast. So an unsettled weekend, very windy on Saturday and cool. Still feeling cool on Sunday, a little less windy, but a lot of cloud cover and showers or longer spells of rain. Now this westerly breeze we keep as we start next week. If we zoom out, we can see high pressure sitting to the south, low pressure now well to the north. Amy's gone away. We've got the jet stream sitting to the north of the UK. Hurricane Imelda just milling about as an ex-hurricane and unlikely to affect the UK actually. It's most likely just to fizzle away in the mid-Atlantic. And Monday itself and into Tuesday, we keep this westerly dominated airflow, which on this probability plot, this shows each day for the next two weeks the most likely weather patterns affecting the UK. They're all coloured up and you can see westerly dominated the dark blue, most likely on Monday into Tuesday, perhaps Wednesday as well. So very similar weather patterns. Nothing particularly stormy or really unsettled, but generally a westerly flavour for the start of next week and into Tuesday and in fact Wednesday we'll continue to see this kind of westerly flavour with spells of rain for the west and northwest of the UK in particular perhaps again causing some uh, issues for western Scotland but drier to the south and the southeast and it is expected to eventually turn drier later next week more widely across the UK with a better chance of higher pressure starting to build in. This is the most likely weather pattern for Wednesday. Again, you can see the blues here, they represent above average rainfall for Western Scotland, but the browns here represent below average rainfall as higher pressure starts to move in to the south. And that's more likely, more, more represented in these second and third most likely weather patterns with higher pressure building in a bit sooner. But Whichever way you look at it, that higher pressure becomes increasingly dominate, dominant in the model output for later next week. This is the most likely weather pattern for Friday. High pressure firmly there across the south of the UK. Browns more widely across the country, indicating below average rainfall by this stage for the time of year. And similar for the second and third most likely weather patterns with high pressure sitting just to the south or the west of the UK. In fact, this is from the control member of the European model once again for Saturday, the 11th of October. And I just show this because this shows high pressure in place across the UK. So drier, much more settled, much calmer, perhaps some misty mornings and so on, but plenty of sunny spells if this came off. But perhaps of more note here is the, are the tracks of low pressure, hardly any affecting the UK. So this comes from 50 tracks of low pressure for the second half of next week and it just shows most of them to the north, most of them not particularly deep, and most of them avoiding the UK. So yes, after Storm Amy blows through, it's going to remain very changeable, very mixed for a few days before eventually higher pressure starts to build in from the south.